Hello and welcome to the inaugural Blacklock Preview podcast with me, Rex Worth. Um, at the time of recording, we are currently eight days out from teeing it up next week in Catalonia for the eighth edition of the Blacklock. First time outside of the United Kingdom, we're taking it overseas. Um, speaking to Captains Chip and Henson the other day, they felt, and rightly so, that the product um, had just got too big for the British Isles, and uh, it was time we uh, we took the competition to a more continental market. So hats off to them. Um, we've got um, some new faces, uh, one new face, some some returning old faces, uh, and a lot of regular faces in, in, in this year's edition. So all the ingredients um, to make for a fantastic match. Um, and actually, one ingredient in particular, I think, which has really got the juices flowing. For the first time in the build-up to a black lock, we've got some real, genuine competitive edge, a bit of needle. Um, I'm sure none of the smugglers will mind me saying that the previous build-ups, at least, have been prefaced by some real shellackings at the hands of the crows. I mean, the first six black locks, there really wasn't much of a competition. It was more of an exhibition. But last year, as we all know, Captain Jip got his troops in order and they actually turned it round and won one. So for the first time in my memory, hard to call. We're going into this one with a little bit of unknown, genuine competition in our hands. Um, and so, yeah. Um, and tonight we're going to be looking ahead to next week and we'll be discussing a few different things. The course, you know, potential picks, potential uh, selections, who we think is going to do well. Um, and joining me on the panel, I've got two guests, a very balanced panel. We've got one from each team, um, John Owen from the Smugglers and uh, our very own Tom Bradford from the Crows. So um, without any further ado, let's get cracking and let's bring in the uh, the guests. Chaps, good evening. Good evening. What? What is with your camera, Rex? How do you mean? <laughs> the quality is atrocious. Is it still bad now? Yeah. You do look okay. a bit hazy. Can you hear you me okay? calls like this? I think so. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. The, thing, the thing is, it doesn't matter, because apparently this, this platform just uploads it and sorts it all out. But anyway, we digress, because there's a chance that no one's actually viewing this they're just listening to this so we should probably pretend as if it's radio rather than a video call that's a good idea but anyway thanks okay. for joining thanks for joining tom are you well yeah really well well busy day but pretty good um before we talk anything specific blacklock how's um how's your golf game um i went to the range on saturday any good? And I went the week before as well, and some good, good iron work. <laughs> but how's that going to play with the higher bag in Catalonia? Uh, well, it's, it's all about it's all about developing a, a pre sort of pre shot routine that you feel comfortable with. And I've never felt like this approaching John, an iron shot. John, are you aware it's of this? It's all about getting the set up right. Are you aware of DJ's plans for 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 hiring hiring a set of irons? Is that is that right, Tom? You're going to take driver and putter yeah, and then hire, hire irons. I'll bring. I'll probably bring a fairway, a fairway wood as well. I think this I is a massive CT call. Pan is. Mate, I think you forget. For the last, like, it could be, it could be a reason why I'm not particularly great at golf. But for the last four years, I've, I've been playing numerous sets. I, I go every summer to Portugal <laughs> and I hire a set out there. This isn't. This isn't new to me. I play new sets all the time. But yeah, uh, Blacklock is not Blue Peter. Well, I agree. And I don't think... I think, Bradford, My... you're, you're self-taught. You're like a shit Bubba Watson. And so I don't think you can just chop and change irons left, right and centre and expect it to go OK. Um... As a teammate, I'm worried. As a teammate, I'm hugely worried. Well, you saw me up in... I played... No, you were actually on my barrack round. Great iron iron shots with the barrack round. Yeah, don't play that. much of those clubs at all. Well, fingers crossed. Um, I before you. How's I, your I, game, John? My game. Mm. Uh, uh, it's looking pretty sharp, thanks, Tom. It's uh, a lot of work going on in the off season. Um, working on 
various bits. Uh, DJ, you know, he's just been in Mauritius for two weeks on a uh, <laughs> on like a on like a training camp with with his new wife, Mrs. Owen, on the bag. <laughs> was it was it your honeymoon? Yeah. Was there any golf? Yeah, two rounds. Call it that. <laughs> nice. But if you if you're playing every other day, is it honeymoon or is it a training camp? <laughs> flare, flare on the sticks. Uh, Danny Sinison. Uh, <laughs> One of those like visor things you get like in Indonesia. <laughs> exactly. Um, I was saying Back before I did a little intro before you before I did you into the room. I was saying um, what I'm looking forward to most is that there's a real competitive edge for the first time to the Black Lock. Like I think the first five six editions it was more of an exhibition everyone knew what was going to happen but this time genuinely could see it going either way what are you tom looking forward to most about next week are we recording right now yeah we're recording we're live we're not live we're recording i thought you were going to count us down into the it doesn't matter. We can, we, can, we, we can deal with some of this in post, but I'll probably just leave it in, to be honest, because, you know, it's been good so far. Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> um, I mean, like, I've been bit, eating. Yeah, a little bit of professionalism. I wasn't going to say I was going to save until afterwards, but if you want to wear your dirty laundry, we can talk about it now. Oh, sorry. I'm glad you told me. Um, what, am I, what am I most looking forward to? Yeah. Oh, for, for the whole Blacklock? Um I think the overall spectacle, ha- having having it abroad, has really like amped things up. I was originally a bit of a naysayer. I thought this would write off yeah, I, a chunk, too. especially among the dads. Um, but yeah, credit to Jip and Jip and Bill who who dug their heels and eventually found a, a fucking sweet setup. It looks yeah, great there. Like, and I've come like princes, full circle. But let's... It, yeah, it's so grim here in London at the moment. It's freezing. It's like raining all the time. Actually, the thought of just getting out there in some shorts and low 20s weather is just delightful. No, absolutely. John, absolutely. What's, 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 what's got you chomping at the bit? Well, obviously, as, as Tom touched on, the first edition abroad is obviously very exciting, but uh, it's especially exciting for us that it's our first time going into the contest as defenders of the title. Um, a lot of the a lot of the chatter in the group has been jip about t- getting our thumbs dug into the scar tissue that will have developed on the crow side. Um, some shaped pieces of bad news, as they say. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it doesn't surprise me that your captain's coming out with that kind of shite. <laughs> Do you know? Um... I, think, I think the course course is supposed to be super tricky, which could be could be quite fun. Lots lots of four putts. Yeah, I think, men, I, I think it's going to be centurions. I think it's going to be chaos. Um, do you know? Do you know what's got me most excited? Gunny, tell me. Gunny. Gunny. I know nothing about go Gunny. Gunny. Exactly. Maybe it's a war gun. <laughs> um, I have absolutely no knowledge about anything to do with Gunny. But when I heard that Gunny had been added to your the smuggler sides, I have to say I was petrified. Tom, or well, Bradford's walked away. I don't know. Pizza. Do you know anything about Gunny? Has anyone got any intel about Gunny? Because at the moment, all I yeah. can think no, is I, that I, I, he's I've been good. Well, I've never, I've never played golf with him. I know, he, I know, he plays quite a lot of Wentworth through work. <laughs> so yeah, he's he plays some nice tracks. Deal. But, but I, is I mean, he... I've only been. I've put him in context for me. Is he mates with Meldrum and and Doyle and Cos? Yeah, I think I think he was at uni with Doyle. Okay. Uh, yeah, at, like I think one of the football guys there, absolute oh. wreckhead. He's going to be, be a good, good on good on the Australia. Yeah, I'm worried about him. Honestly, <laughs> I don't think anyone wants to draw Gunny Brian Gunn. <laughs> but I think I think he was like a golf protege growing up. I've, I've heard I've heard like growing up he was. Something of the Eldrick Woods, but um, I don't know. I think maybe discovered the booze, the woman, and hampered his golf 
progression, but I think he's he's capable of some really special rounds, but also some quite quite choppy stuff occasionally as well. Yeah, there are a lot of Victor, Victor Dubuisson comparisons uh, coming through. A bit of a magician. Um, Is that looks or golf wise, John? Uh, both, both. Um, so, <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah. keeps himself Great to himself, thought. but a but a mercurial golfer at, at, at his very best. Yeah, exactly. Well, while exactly. we're on it, should we just should we just do some quick team team news? So. Crows, unchanged apart from one, out goes Gitz, back comes Will Devitt into the fold. So we've got me, Billy, Bowser, Doylo, Radman, Freddy, Devitt. Uh, I think that's it. I think that's the eight. Uh, on the smuggler side, as ever, a little bit more chopping and changing. Taze sadly drops out, as does Rob Eckersley, but in comes, or back in, comes Big Al. That's a huge win. And, of course, Gunny, who we just talked about. So, I, I mean, I quite like how that shapes up. Um, I think from a smuggler point of view, much as it loathes me to say, I think Big Al's a big signing. His record wasn't up to much last time out, but I like what he's about. John, would you agree? I've got him as my top point scorer this season. Uh, <laughs> John, just can I, can I take – I've got a bit of data I just want to throw at you. Do you, know, oh, okay. do you know Big Al's? Do you know Big Al's record? He's played four, he's played four, one black locks. He's played four matches. Do you know his record? Yeah, his record doesn't really matter to be honest. But oh, well, I'll, t- I'll tell you. Oh, two and two. One, one Great. none. Lost, lost two. Halved two. Yeah. Um, as I was saying, his length off the tee. He carries six wedges in the bag. Um, Mercurial, Paul Daniels around the green, dream he partner. Little, he hits that little trap draw, which I don't know, I haven't played it, but it could be good over there. He just, you know, that like low swinging hook. Mm. Uh, there was a, a hybrid, uh, one of those matches later on in Backcock where you have a real gathering on one of the tees, and he smoked a hybrid into a par three that <laughs> it raised a few crow's eyebrows. Um, <laughs> We haven't got one of that next week, I can tell you. Um, no. one, one, well, Tom, you might have an update. Bit of injury news on the airwaves. Johnny Meldrum struggling with a thumb. Yeah, the key man. What's the latest? For the, for the smugglers. How's he doing? I think you know? it's out of the splint. It's, it only came out of the splint in the last, like, few days. Um... I'm not sure if it's in the cryogenic chamber, what what Jip what Jip's trying to do to make sure he's at peak fitness, but I think it could go to the wire. It's it's got it screams of like metatarsal injury leading up to an England World Cup. It's got those vibes. A Jip Jip's <laughs> fairly in the dark. I don't know how much he knows. Um <laughs> but yeah, it, it, we could we could get a, I'd love to be going up against Meldrum and he just has to retire after seven. But do you know what do you know what I like about Meldrum is that I get the sense it's basically it's the same every year. Like he's always nursing something. I think he's had like a knee before. He's always got a knee. He's got a finger. He's always a little bit undercooked. Yeah. He always turns up, and he always like gets on it. Plays really good golf and gets no points. And I actually think it's going to be the same thing this time because again, I was running some data. His record is really, really quite bad. Um, which I don't really see why. I think he gets saddled with his captain quite a lot. But other than that, I play with him. He's playing, always playing lights out golf. But for whatever reason, he just can't quite put it together. Quite a low handicapper, um, isn't he? I think he gets, gets done a bit. He, yeah, he does. He does. Um, let's talk about the course a little bit. I was going to read you something. I went on the top 100 course website, PGA Catalonia Stadium course. Let me just read you a little bit from that uh, the, the intro they've got on that site. So, on the first tee, the true majesty of the PGA de Catalunya is immediately apparent with an elevated drive to a dogleg left par four. Trouble waits in front of the tee and only a good, solid shot will provide the ability to reach the green with anything less than a long iron or a fairway wood. For the handicapped golfer, i.e. all of us, leaving this green with a bogey must be viewed as an acceptable result. 
um blah 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 additionally there are a number of large lakes on the course which bend perfectly with the landscape and on some holes the water is used creatively to form semi-island greens my point which i think what you were saying earlier tom is that i think there could be some massive numbers i think there's going to be real issue for both teams of just getting the ball in the hole with quick greens a lot of water uh i think it could be dramatic i'm not sure there's going to be a lot of halves yeah Billy's played it, hasn't he? He's the only only one. Billy's played there. We should know he's had a hold. He's had a hold in one there. Was that hole in one like? Did he hit over a hundred? Yeah, yeah, it was like a full proper hole in one, like par three. I mean, no, 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 no. But in in terms of the overall round, what was the score? The course, otherwise, I don't know how he got on apart from his yeah, amazing he, ace. I think it was a mixed bag. My, my thing with this, and John, you'll, you'll have some thoughts on this, is that it's going to be like fiddly. It's going to be quick greens and everything's fiddly. And I think looking down those 16 players, like who who's really a good chipper out of any of those 16? Like Jip, obviously, and then like Meldrum probably and probably Gunny. But I actually think everyone else is like really quite a subpar chipper. And like Tom, I don't want to call you out, but like the way you hit yours, the way you flight yours in, that's never going to hold anything over there. And I, I think I'm in the same <laughs> camp. I don't, I don't feel at all confident. And my worry is there's just going to be faffing about like chip, chip, four part, you know, in for an eight or nine a lot. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong, but I've got some sneaky. I mean, I think it's going to be hilarious, but I'm a sneaky suspicion that's how it's going to play out. It's a match play competition. Um, so you're not playing against the course. You're playing against the other two guys on the other side. So, yes, it's going to be a difficult course. But well, you've got to be worried um, personally because your chipping your chipping's abysmal. <laughs> it's awful. It's awful. It's awful. But I know pretty much everyone's is awful. So it doesn't matter. Level playing fields. Um, before each round, I know I'll be working on my chipping, chipping green, trying to get a little nipper going um, and get some confidence. Um, but, yeah, very excited to play a European Tour or DP World Tour course. Um, I have played Valderrama before, so got experience on these tough <laughs> Spanish. And how did you get on? Um, <laughs> I didn't. I think I shot 89. <laughs> on the front nine. That was it. A cricketer would have been proud. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you want to, let's do some picks. Um, before before we come to picks, I, let me just run, because I've, I've run some data, I've done some analysis, me and Jeff have been doing it. We've only got, we've only got figures, stats, back until uh, the last... Well, from Blacklock 4 onwards, I don't know what, we've lost we've lost the intel prior to that. But, so that's the last four Blacklocks I've got data from. Who, well, I'll ask you, who do you reckon is the top point scorer in that period? Or top three? Um, on av- average points or actual total just points? T- just total, aggregate points. Okay. I'll go... Hopton. Is he in there? He's not in there. No. I've, I've no any, um, the top five are Rex, all crows. Rex, Devitt, uh, Henson. Yeah, it's not far off. I, let me, let me I, tell you. So there's, oh, I've got 11 and a half. Freddie's got 10 and a half. This is the one that sticks out for me. Devitt's got 10 and a half points, but he, he's missed a match. So, Will in the last four, well, he's in, the, in his last three black locks has played twelve matches. He's gone ten, one, and one, which is slightly terrifying. That is very terrifying. And then we've got Henson Doyle, and like yeah. Jip, Jip's the only one in the top in the top eight from a smuggler point of view. So, I um, mean, we we knew that going in. It's pretty bleak, pretty bleak re- reading. Um, okay, with that in mind, then I want to hear. Tom, who do you think top point scorer for the week? Um, I think I think it's got to be Devitt. Reese okay. Mogg. 
Bobby I mean, Charlton. The stats would back it up. The return yeah. of the king. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's hard to look past that record. Um, John, what about you? Who are you, who are you lumping for? I saw the look on Baz's face when the third grapper went down in their restaurant last year. And I know since then he's been putting in a lot of hard work with Mike Bender, the uh, Instagram golf coach. Uh, His swing's looking frighteningly on plane at the moment. He slowed down his pre-shot routine a bit. Um, And... I just think, having played him three times the previous year and got cleaned out each time, I think we're going to see a pretty serious bounce back from Richards. Um, so he's been my pick. Okay. So, okay. I, I, I can see some logic there. I mean, his record since 2018, 8, 7 and 1. He's the lowest ranked crow in our in our squad. Um <laughs> But, I don't know. I think he putts well. I think he'd be good on quick greens. Um, uh, do you want to know my pick? He also... Well, going to be top... Sorry, you can. You just, let's have your picks. Well, I'll go my top pick. And it's also top captain because uh, I picked captain. I think the top point scorer is going to be Jip. Um, and, and let me tell you why. A... He's got by far and away the best short game out of the 16 people going. And I think that's going to count for a lot in Catalonia. Tight greens, quick greens. You've got to be able to chip well and you've got to be able to putt well. And no one does it better than him. Plus, we know that he saddles himself with a with a pretty good mount. Uh, I was looking back at his foursomes partners and it's basically just Wery and, and Meldrum and occasional Jackers sprinkled in. So he, he knows where to position himself to get the points. And then my third reason, a lot is made of the morning and afternoon disparity with Jip, which I think is true because the stats back it up. He's 5-2-1 and in morning sessions, 3-4-1 and in the afternoon because we know he just gets knackered. He can't last the course and he has a few beers at lunch. Uh, I don't know this for sure, but I think we might be in buggies in Catalonia uh, as a chance. I mean, if it's even an option, I think the captain's going to be paying for that and recharging the squad. So... I think he's going to actually be quite solid throughout the two days. Um, and that's why I've got him as, as top point scorer and top captain by definition. I mean, I asked you to think about top captain. Do you, do you, either of you think Billy's going to get more points than Jip or are you with me on the Jip point? I, I was with you on the Jip points until I bumped into Captain Henson two hours ago. Um, uh, on top of the uh, appalling... Uh, case of sandbagging that he's been uh, doing over the last month. He's also booked a two-hour putting lesson this weekend. So not only stacking up that handicap, he's bringing it down off course, which um, it stinks. Uh, but it does hand the advantage to to him. Um, some of the goal fast skip has been playing over the last six months has been... <laughs> A touch wild, <laughs> uh, but yeah, um, yeah. Well, we'll see how can, it plays out. I can see that. DJ, you backing you backing our captain, or you think Jip's going to get the edge? Just in terms of the, the captain with the most points. I think. Well, I think Jip's arguably the favourite based on recent like Blacklock form, but I think Billy is going to cause a bit of a surprise. Yeah, he's also yeah, added yeah. bulk, isn't he? He's been he's been hard at work off the course in the gym. He's added twenty five yards. Don't don't rule that out. Absolutely, and, and he knows the course. Um, yeah, of course he does. It's a home. It's a home track for him. Mm, two years um, on the trot didn't help. What what I'm going to do is I want to I've got a little segment that I've drawn up which I want to which I want to run by you. It's called Lost on the Plane, and the premise is I want you, Tom, obviously speaking for the crows, John speaking for the smugglers. If you could have your wish and one bit of equipment from the opposition team's bags, suitcases, whatever gets missed, get gets lost on the way over and doesn't make it to Spain, what would you? what would you pick? Now, I'll give you some categories. John, I'll start with you, and feel free to add something different if you disagree, but I think 
these are the options in terms of lost on the plane for the Crows. So you've, I've got Devitt's driver, Bowser's putter, Freddie's putter, Doyle's three wood, Freddie's windbreaker. Uh, so Devitt's drive would be tempting, but he's very good with his irons, everything else off the tee. So whilst I feel like that would be a good pick, um, at the same time, he would suffer suffer less as a result. Um, you take Bowser's putter, you're left with um, barely a chassis of a vehicle. Um, basically, <laughs> nuts. Tooth- nuts. Tooth- <laughs> tooth- toothless. <laughs> The springs. <laughs> um, so I'm looking actually your driver X. Um, I suppose it's a similar situation to Devitt's irons. You could be still good off the tee, but um, you're not quite as long as well. So I'm I'm taking your driver. Okay, you take, well, I, that thing's a wild snake at the moment, but I appreciate the fact that when I, Tom, you're quite like this. When we I was chatting this segment through, well, actually, I wasn't even chatting this segment, but I was chatting with Taze um, about this, and he. <laughs> He texts me saying, biggest concern for the Crows, I would have thought, is whether Freddie's trolley slash bag can travel. Always think he starts a match one up when he removes that thing from his amply sized boot. Um, <laughs> it's, pretty, it's pretty spot on. I'm not sure how applicable it is. I don't think he's going to be travelling with his trolley, but I wouldn't put it past him. Um, OK, Tom, for you, lost on the plane. These are your options. Again, you can have one if you if, if you think of something different. But I've got Gyps Hybrid, Gyps Pitching Wedge, or Sam Wedge, whatever he uses. The thing he's in, the thing he's in a complete you know magician with. Uh, John's Two Iron, um, and then I've since regretted this. I did have Johnny Meldrum Shorts on there, but I feel like that might be slightly negated by the fact that we could all be in shorts. So you can have that if you want. But really, we're talking Gyps Hybrid, Gyps Wedge, John's Two Iron. A and other that comes to mind. God, I'm just trying to think who else is in the team. I mean, it's a slight think... damning reflection that I can't think of anything else. I think but those really are <laughs> weapons. <laughs> I do think Ibby's hype um, yeah. can 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 cause a lot of damage because the thing is, if his driver is not on. It's it's really not on, but he obviously just puts it back in the bag, and the hive comes out, and he's rock solid. I mean, he's he's like he's like a bowling ball. He just he just gets into his rhythm, and he yeah he just pumps it up there, and let, lets the short game cut off the shots. But like yeah, I think, I, I'd, I think I'd probably maybe, go I, for it, it. Has to be if he's high because I was having this conversation with it, and he's the first to admit it when when we talked through his bag. He says he's got obviously putter his wedges, and then he says he maxes out his sand wedge or pitching wedge at like one two five, and then he says he goes all the way. Say he hits his hybrid one ninety, he's got one ninety to one two five, where in in his own words, his options are really lean on a wedge or take something off a hybrid, and he has nothing in between. Yeah, so, so. <laughs> off. I honestly think if he, if he, if he took his hybrid on the plane, he'd buy another one. Um, okay, yeah, that, that's um, got to be my pick. Um, okay, um, some other news for you, which I thought you'd be interested to hear, and anyone who's listening, which I'm not sure there will be anyone in, would be interested to hear. Slight tweak, uh, I've agreed with the captains to how we do the draws. So, this was inspired by the President's Cup. Um, so previously, obviously, we've they've done their kind of right there four pairings for each session uh, and then kind of just read them out one by one. And then the singles has always been a slight fudge. What they do in the President's Cup and what we're going to do this year is like a ABBA snake draw. So whoever's going first, say, you know, it's Billy in the foursomes. He says, OK, I'm going to send out Bowser and Doyle. And then Jip basically can respond. He doesn't have to show his hand. He can pick any pair to match them up against them. He then says, OK, they're going to be saying then he goes first the next time. So basically the captains get to react and get to be a little bit more tactical. And also when it comes to the singles, they can, you know, they can kind of match people up if they want to do that. Um, so when I, you say A, B, A, do you announce one single player from a pair and then you have to say two and then they say the other one? 
No, you you announce your pair, they announce their <laughs> pair, but then they go first. So you go, it's like a snake. Um, but, um, I mean, interested to get your thoughts, John, tactically, because that gives a lot more tactical, tactical influence to the captains. I mean, I don't think it's going to make a great deal of difference, but... but were you to say that's going to favour one team versus the other, where's your head? Uh, I would say it's going to favour the smugglers. Uh, the reason being, um, if Jimbo says we're going to send out Gunny and Hans Gruber, um, Billy is not going to have a clue who to send out. There's a element of mystery surrounding a lot of our players with three new three new players joining the team this year or um, one new player and two, hang on, is it two new players? I can't remember. A lot of changes to our lineup. So there's more Just unpredictability with our team. Is, um, is Hans Gruber the, the clay mine, Will Clay? Hey, Bill Clay, yeah. Hans, Bill Clay is um, Alan Rickman in Die Hard. Uh, <laughs> he's he real name. He looks like him. No, he uh, Hans Gruber is obviously the terrorist and uh, pretends to be called Bill Clay to avoid uh, getting into trouble with John McLean, uh, Bruce Willis. So, uh, hence he's called Hans Gruber. Uh, so yes, element of element of mystery. Uh, the Crows lineup has is largely unchanged. Jip knows them all like the back of his hand, therefore his picks are easier. Yeah, well, the only disagree. thing I think that is, this is, yeah, I would disagree because I think the, the smugglers really don't have that many options up their sleeve. So, like, it has to be Jip and Meldrum in both foursome sessions. I can't see him putting himself with anyone else. And then he's got to scrabble together. Obviously, maybe the gun. The gun can play with anyone. But I don't know. I think <laughs> Billy's Billy's probably already modelling some of this stuff. Uh, and so he's a deep thinker. Exactly, yeah. All, all the permutations are covered. <laughs> Billy's got this. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Every anyway, eventuality. It's, it's a nice wrinkle. It's a nice wrinkle. Other news uh, you might have heard already today on the grapevine, but I've convinced uh, Jip to finally establish a solid social media presence for the Blacklock. So we set up an Instagram. Check it out. At Blacklock Golf is the handle. He's putting up lots of content, old photos, new photos, uh, data. He's doing it. He's doing a lot. So um, so check that out. Um, and that's really it for any other business. Anything else you had on your list, John, you wanted to talk about before we sign off? Uh, I've got a predicted score line, actually. I don't think we've shared those. Uh, before we go, who's going to win? Uh, yeah, let's discuss it. Who's going to win? So, hard to call, uh, but I've gone ten and a half, nine and a half to the smugglers. I do think the reintroduction of Devitt is going to play a factor. Um, I want to bring up the scar tissue again. A lot of smugglers, are, uh, a lot of crows, um, yeah, might not recover from last year. Um, yeah, but it's going to be very tight. BJ, agree, disagree? Disagree once more. Um, was it was it ten and a half, nine and a half last year? It was it ten was. and a half, nine and a half. I missed a five footer to to make it ten all, but we haven't we haven't we've gone thirty two minutes without talking about that, which is good. I I, I bottled my match against against Taz as well. I mean, there was a lot of bottle jobs across the board. Previous previous black locks have been one just I think down to us outclassing them. Those days might be behind us. They're, they're, they're much better now. But there was a lot of bottle jobs from the from the Crows last year, and I think we'll, we'll have rallied. I think Billy's got some some pretty inspirational uh, team talks in, 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 in the locker room planned for, for Catalonia. And I think after the end of the weekend, we'll be 12-8 we'll be to the good. 12-8. I think... I had it at eleven nine, crows. I think, I think they, I think both sides have probably strengthened. I think Devitt, having won ten out of twelve matches since since we started keeping records, is pretty terrifying. But the smugglers have added the gun, 
Ilkay Gundogan. Honestly, I don't. I'm terrified. I think he could go four and zero without even blinking. So they kind of met each other up. I think it's going to be you know anyone's anyone's game. Um, but I'm going eleven nine crows. I think experience counts for a lot, and uh, we've got some some winners uh, running through the spine of that team. So there we go. Um, any more chaps, or should we leave it there? I think for me, all good. Thank you. Brilliant. Thank you both for joining. Uh, I'll see you next week for the big event, the event itself. Spain, here we come. And I'll see you over there. Stay safe until then. See you later. Goodbye.